I grew up on a street called Radio Court. It's not far from here. You just go up Harbison, make a right on Division, left on Valencia, and then it's just past nine. Radio Court is where my mom and dad built a home for Manang, Marung, and me. And this morning, I finally had the courage to ask my mom how she met my dad. My mom is from a town in the Philippines called San Marcelino. She told me she met him through her hairdresser, who happened to be a relative of my dad's. He lived in the next town over, in San Narciso. They used to sing karaoke together, the Beatles, Carpenters, Bee Gees, and they used to make each other laugh. That's how they met. When I was a kid, dad would get his hair cut either at the barber shop, just right there, or at another place between Texas Liquor and Trish's Chicken. Mom and I would get our hair done at Freddy's Hair Salon <laughs> next to Manila, Tokyo, and I hated going there. <laughs> I used to have really big, thick, curly hair, and Freddy would do all this stuff to it that took a whole day. And he would tell me, when you grow up, you're going to be beautiful like your mom. And then he'd go and make me look like a damn chia pet. <laughs> so whenever dad said he was going to the barber, I'd ask to go with him and see if I could convince him to let me get my hair cut there too. Nobody knew about Radio Court except for the neighbors who lived there with us and our family and friends. Ariana's mom remembered me as her friend who lived in a ditch. I lived about four miles southeast of her. She'd have to go down Imperial, then up the steep part of Valencia, get onto Skyline, quick left onto Radio Drive, go down, keep going, and then finally make a right onto my street. Ours was the light blue house, two stories. Once you got enough of all the trees and rose bushes, you'd see Manang's broken window screen on the second floor. Our family was big. Dad was the oldest of nine, and they settled in San Diego a long time ago. Apung Lakai served as a cook in the Navy during World War II. That's how he became the first US citizen in our family. He moved back to the Philippines after the war, met Apung Bukat, and they started their family there. In the 60s, Apung Lakai brought his family to the States and settled in National City because it was so close to the base on 32nd. So they lived near El Toyon on Gama Street. Then, when Dad and his siblings got older, they all started their families within five miles of each other. We were on radio court. Uncle Alderson was on Stillwell. Uncle Edwin and Uncle Simon were on Altamont. Uncle Jerson was on Rio in those apartments, and then later he moved to Tuma. Auntie Narma was on Valencia. Uncle Noel was on Aquamarine. And Auntie Myrna and Uncle Leslie stayed at Gama with Apu. And then there, are, then there were our extended relatives who lived on streets I didn't know, like Deep Del and Mariposa. Like Apung Lukai, almost half of my family had made a living by enlisting in the military. This meant that a lot of the time, dad and the uncles were gone. So my mom had to petition for mama and papa to come from San Marcelino. Mom needed their help to take care of Manang, Marung, and me while she worked. I loved growing up on Radio Court. In the front yard, we had a massive bougainvillea tree. When you got up close to it, you'd see these tiny white star flowers poking out of the hot pink blossoms. And when you looked even closer, you'd notice how every pink petal actually looked more like a leaf. You could even see the veins inside of each petal. Then one day, a stranger drove through the neighborhood. You could tell they were a stranger because you couldn't recognize their car. Dad said when that happens, you have to pay attention. If you see a car you don't know, it might not be good. But luckily, this was not one of those times. When this stranger saw our, saw our bougainvillea tree, they stopped their car, walked up to the giant cage at our front door, and rang the doorbell. They couldn't believe how many blossoms our tree had. They asked mom if she had some secret to growing it out like that. Was it imported? They had somewhere to be, but could they come back to take a branch? My mom laughed and said, yes, of course you can come back to take a branch. They thanked her, and then they left. I had to ask mom, what does imported mean? And then I learned this stranger believed our big pink tree was very special. For the rest of the afternoon, I waited in our living room and looked through our windows to see if they would come back. But by the time it got dark and I had to close all the blinds, they still hadn't come. 
But the bougainvillea was a shrub compared to the jungle garden in our backyard. Dad had built rows and rows of benches with built-in shade just for mom's orchids. We had an overhead lattice for the chayote and the bungal, lattices for the paria, coops for the chickens, a house for gizmo. There were small fields of tarong, kamates, green sibuyas. We also set up an outdoor stove where Papa could cook fish. But my favorites were the trees. We had marungay, lemon, and calamansi. I was so proud of our calamansi trees because they always had fruit. One of them grew to be taller than our house. And thanks to the sun, the sweetest, biggest, ripest looking fruits were at the very top. Even when Papa used the ladder, we could never reach them. All I could do was stare at them through the bars on my brother's window and hope they would come down on their own. We were surrounded by all these fresh fruits and vegetables, trees, orchids, and rose bushes that mom and dad had grown together, and I loved them. But as we got older, this home wasn't enough for mom and dad. They were always yelling and fighting. Whether he was home or deployed, they would always find ways to hurt each other. Manang and Manung would end up going to their rooms and keep to themselves. They would close their doors shut and wouldn't let me in. But to me, it didn't matter. I loved our home. To me, everything we had was enough. After the divorce, my mom uprooted us. It was right before Manung's senior year and before my sophomore year at Morris. To this day, I still think about radio court a lot. I still think about our bougainvillea and our roses. I still think about our calamansi, our tabungal, our kamates, our paria. I didn't know we lived in Southeast until we left. All I knew were the names of the streets my family lived on. Today, out of the nine Abugan siblings, only one of them still lives in the same house. The rest of us left and never came back. I'm a grown up now and I'm supposed to have moved on, but that's just not true. I miss our home. I miss seeing my mom and my dad together when they were happy. So these days, when I am homesick, I tell myself, at least I have my mom's face and my dad's laughed. At least with me, I am enough and they are still together and still happy.